Hello everyone, this is Gally and welcome to a new episode of How to Draw Dragons. Today I'm going to teach you and show you how to choose maybe the patterns for your dragons once you have your design, what colors to put and to think behind it before you color them. So you don't end up with one of my crazy designs like this. Okay. So first, what I do is I observe the patterns and the fur of animals. If they have fur, if they have scales or feathers. Maybe like to, to see what patterns they have, how they form, how they look like, what colors they can be. So in this case, for example, mammals and a snake, you can see how they only have like two colors, like black and white, brown and darker brown, black and orange, etc. And in the same way you can see how, for example, some reptiles can have many whimsical designs and colors and they can change, like for example chameleons, they can change this one, for example. This is mostly chameleons, but you can see snakes, you can see how they have like vibrant colors as red, black and white, maybe they have green, brown, like you can Im invest a lot of time looking at animals and see how they look try to understand why they have those colors. It could be for camouflage or maybe just to flash like the peacocks. It could be for many different reasons but you can adapt that to your dragons and make them look even more wonderful. What I do for example is I look at fish and birds and see how many colors they can have, how many patterns. In case you see for example these ones have one, two, three colors, this one has two colors one, two, just one. So it's very interesting to see how they look, how they change. And in this example of what not to do, I have my own Galidor when, well, this was 10 years ago. I didn't really understand the purpose of color, the purpose of patterns and such in my design. So I just went all in with what I thought would look good. And I liked it, I liked my dragon, but I don't like the colors now. If you can see this, it's pretty much blinding. It has like all these flashy colors and very intense blue and very intense red and they don't go together that well. Red and green go together and blue and purple they do, but like all of this mashup of colors is just too much. He doesn't look happy about it either. Just look at that. Okay, so this is what not to do. Do not mash all your colors, every single color you like into one design. Think behind it. I mean, you can do that. You're free to do that, but well, in the end, it's just not a very good design. So what I did after that is took some time to redesign his color scheme. And I decided, this was also like six years ago, but I decided to shorten the colors to just four. So orange and blue, they're complementary. Purple and yellow, or gold, are complementary. Purple and orange and purple and blue, they go well together as well as yellow and orange. So all these colors work together. I also simplified the wing design and added less lines and, you know, I kind of made it simpler. And from that, Sky Sealer made this beautiful drawing I made her to do of Galidor. And you can see how he looks much better and simpler than the other one that was like too flashy and too much. He still has bright colors, but he looks more realistic and plausible and attractive than the other super flashy dragon. So that's a very big difference. So he's like all flash and this one is more tame, more cautious in his approach of color and it works better. So that's my own character example, but I have some color theory things. For example, the red one is when you draw a, a character that's maybe angry or has power, like a red fire or flame in a dragon, maybe having a sweet, calm dragon do in purple, a black dragon that's scary, you know, like follow that kind of idea. That doesn't mean that these colors are locked and written in stone, that you cannot do a, I don't know, an angry dragon in blue. Of course you can. But they do reflect what most of our 
minds think when we see these colors is like green is nature, yellow is more happy than black maybe, although I love black. So you can grab a mixture of colors and make a design. But what I did in my other design, which was wrong, was to have all these colors together that just don't make sense, maybe except black, but you get what I mean. So you have a character and you don't know what colors to choose, look for things in nature. What I did is grab reference, for example, in crystals and made a dragon with almost a monotone color, like following just certain colors of one thing to make him look more rock-like. Or maybe grab a reference from animal colors and have him, I don't know, colored like a reptile or an eel. Maybe even a bird. You can have all these references everywhere. And don't limit yourself to animals. You can also go for flowers. Like maybe have a, a pink color or a bright blue or a bright yellow. Like there's no limit to that, but just look for nature for reference because it works perfectly well. Like nature was meant to have like these colors. And once you understand that, your designs will look so much better and more realistic. And if you want to do a super colorful thing, please go ahead, that's also fine. It's your, your design. But if you understand the colors, well, you're gonna have much, much fun. Because you're going to understand the meaning behind the things you do. And that's all for now, guys. If you like this video, please subscribe and hit the bell icon to know when I submit more videos. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.